Allen and Richard Berkowitz, who are the co-authors of a new book on how to have sex in an epidemic, one approach. So uh, tell me, um, Richard, what is the theory behind this book? Um, well, the prevailing opinion about the cause of AIDS appears to be that there's a new AIDS agent, presumably a virus, that it's spreading from group to group and that one contact with this putative agent can cause the disease after a long incubation period. Um, there's also a great deal of research that's going into an alternative viewpoint, which is that there is no new agent, there is no AIDS agent that's causing the disease, but rather it's the result of repeated assaults on the immune system from common viruses in conjunction with environmental factors which we already know cause disturbances in the immune function. Um, so our theory is called the multifactorial theory which suggests that there are many, many causes of immune deficiency and that the causes in each of the affected groups may overlap but they're not necessarily the same. Basically the trigger for the cause of AIDS in the multifactorial theory is cytomegalovirus, which is a common ubiquitous virus which almost everyone gets exposed to in their life. Uh, the difference for gay men is that um, a very severe CMV infection can result when a person gets infected through anal sex, the passive partner. And they are finding in one study in New York City that 40% of sexually active gay men are excreting cytomegalovirus in their sperm and urine. And a CMV infection, one infection, can last for over a year, during which time you would be shedding the virus in your sperm in very high concentrations. So if 40% or one out of every two or three of your sexual partners is going to be capable of infecting you with CMV, it's likely that you will be multiply and repeatedly reinfected with cytomegalovirus because there are many different strains of CMV. So, uh, Michael, tell me, see if I've gotten this straight. The theory says that uh, CMV uh, is basically excreted through the body through sperm and urine. Is, is that true? Well, we're, one of the factors that affects whether or not you get a specific infection is the concentration of virus from the particular exposure. And since we're talking now about CMV, CMV can be in the blood, it can be in the saliva, but well, crucial to the multifactorial view of AIDS in gay men is that CMV is concentrated 10 times higher in the sperm and urine than it is in other bodily secretions. And so we propose that the massive inoculation with CMV virus, which would occur through passive anal intercourse, but also through other, primarily through passive anal intercourse, although uh, it's unclear to us what, uh, what the effects would be of, of oral sex swallowing uh, semen, because their frontline defense is the the temperature of the mouth, the saliva that would break it down, the whole digestive acids. Essentially, um, we view the, the disease in gay men as the result of repeated reinfection with cytomegalovirus in conjunction with other immunosuppressive lifestyle factors. So what you're saying is that basically uh, the contagion seems to be occurring through the anus. Well, the most important difference between our theory and the prevailing view of single hit single agent is that we we believe that AIDS is th is the result of a cumulative process of assaults in other words AIDS is a disease that you really have to work at to over get a over a long period of time and that not a single exposure to CMV or any other agent is sufficient to produce the disease this has very important implications in terms of the contagion issue the public panic um, in terms of people in hospitals you know how afraid the nurses and doctors are of developing AIDS. I mean, our model proposes that it's very, very difficult, and that the general population is not at risk for AIDS. It also have the difference between the two theories is important when you formulate risk reduction advice, and that's essentially it's that difference that we address in our pamphlet, and that's really why we came out with our pamphlet when we did. We were very, very unhappy with the risk reduction advice that groups. Um, that certain doctors and, and doctors' organizations, gay doctors' organizations, were proposing. Well, have you tested this theory out? For instance, the people that have AIDS in New York City, have you tested the theory out as to whether or not these people, can you test their sperm to find out? Absolutely, the yes. And have, has that happened? Yes. And what has the level been throughout all? How many cases have you tested? 
Um, well, Richard referred to one study being done at Roosevelt St. Luke's, which took 100 asymptomatic gay men, meaning uh, otherwise healthy gay men, and they found that that group, 40 percent, had an active CMV infection and were actively excreting the virus in their sperm. And um, virtually 100 percent of gay men with AIDS have cytomegalovirus infections, active CMV infections. Well, is there a level of that infection that is supposed to be higher than another level? What, what, uh, I don't know what the point is of where is the level of CMV infection dangerous? At what point is it dangerous? Well, I, uh, the concept of level is not clear to me. I mean, you either have CMV or you don't, but many factors, um, many factors interact to determine whether or not you actually develop an infection. And one of those factors is the massiveness of the inoculation. What I'm suggesting is that perhaps, um, I don't know, if you were exposed to CMV orally, your chances aren't as great of developing an actual infection as they are if you receive it anally, because um, the CMV would be absorbed directly into the bloodstream through the anus because uh, the blood vessels are very close to the surface and the sperm <laughs> tends to sit there. Whereas if you take it orally, you, you might spit it out it or you might, or it gets flushed through the system. I'm not saying that uh, oral sex doesn't expose you to a risk for CMV, but the risk is not as great as passive anal intercourse. I'd like to mention um, a very important report that comes out in, that just came out in the Annals of Internal Medicine which was done by Larry Drew. He's been studying cytomegalovirus in gay men in San Francisco for over two years, and he has been observing it in over 200 men. What they found was that there was There'll be more of our interview next week. Blue Boy started the male sexual revolution, and each month, hot men will provocate, stimulate, and inspire you. In issue after issue are stories that excite, scintillate, and explore your sexuality. Discover where it's happening, when it's happening, and to whom. Hidden within that unmarked mailing envelope are exclusive interviews, in-depth reporting, and coverage of events for your private enjoyment. Without Blue Boy, life can be dull. With Blue Boy, you'll experience the pride of being a gay man and the joy of living a gay lifestyle. Save over 20% by ordering now, only $33 for 12 issues. Send to Blue Boy, GPO Box 2163, New York, New York, 10116. Master or Visa card holders, call now, 807-201-WEST.